Welcome back. And this presentation is called Population Growth, a simple model for the big boom. So we're going to start uh, with what's called simple replacement. And this is where one generation simply replaces the prior and there is no population growth. So in generation one, we have 10 males and we have 10 females. A total of 20 children are born. So each uh, female averages two uh, children who survive to adulthood, half are male, half are female. And this means the next generation looks just like the one above it. Um, and as we follow through the generations, there is no population growth. Now in our model, we're going to assume for a while here, complete replacement. And this means that as one generation reaches adulthood, the prior generation dies. So all we have to do to calculate growth in our population is calculate fertility. And that makes it a lot simpler. So let's add some growth to this model. So this is a simple fertility driven model. And we're going to add some growth. So the first generation is 10 males and 10 females. But we're going to say 40 children are born to that generation. So on average, each woman has four children that survive to adulthood, half male and half female. And if that's the case in generation two, we now have a population of 40 with 20 males and 20 females. So now the population is doubling from one generation to the next. So here's our little map of this. The first generation, 10 plus 10 is 20. We said on average, each woman has four children who make it to adulthood. And we're going to assume they all survive to reproduce. And their offspring are half male and half female, as are they. And that means we take the 10 women and we multiply that by 4. It gives us a population in the next generation and will be 40. And we said it's half male and half female. So the increase from generation 1 to generation 2 is 20 individuals. Now let's look at the third generation. So we've got our numbers at the top. This is where we ended in the second generation. The assumptions stay the same. So now we take 20 females times 4, and this means our population at the next generation is 80. Now it's 40 males plus 40 females. And the growth from the second to the third generation is 40 individuals. Notice that increment of growth. The rate is staying the same, but the increment of growth numerically is getting larger. Let's go from the third to the fourth generation. So we're starting with 80. Our assumptions are the same. We take 40 times 4, we get 160 for the fourth generation, made up of 80 males and 80 females. And that means our increment of growth numerically is 80 individuals. Let's do one more. So the fifth generation with the same assumptions. Starting at 160 for our population, we take those 80 females and multiply that by 4. And our fifth generation population is now 320, made up of 160 males and 160 females. And our increment of growth is 160 individuals. So you can see that with each succeeding generation, we're adding more and more and more individuals. And this is producing a pattern, right? From 1 to 2, we added 20. From 2 to 3, we added 40. From 3 to 4, we added 80. And from 4 to 5, we added 160. And we can expect uh, with our fertility model that this is just going to continue to happen. And we start charting this out and we say, hey, that's not just simple growth. This is exponential growth. And if we follow this out uh, to eight generations, then we're going to go from just 20 people at the beginning of this model to over 2,500 in just eight generations. And that's roughly two centuries. So imagine that we're starting with 20 million people. 
right? We're going from 20 million people to two and a half billion people in just 200 years. And that's with that fertility rate of four in this simple model. That's just amazing. So there's our exponential growth curve. Now, that might be unrealistic, we might think. So what if we push the fertility rate in our model down to three? Well, that does slow things down. So now over those eight generations, we're simply going from 20 people to 350, roughly. And that looks quite better. Uh, going from 8 million, say, to 350 million in just 200 years, um, that's actually pretty similar to the growth of population in the United States over the last uh, two centuries. So growth is still exponential, but now it's taking closer to two generations to double. And of course, we could push the fertility rate lower, but in this model, as long as we're above two, the growth is going to be exponential. And as we go from generation to generation forward, it's going to get higher and higher. So let's change our assumptions here so we can see something else. Let's assume that four generations are alive all at once. And this is generation five to generation eight. And something that you can see if we uh, lay these on their side is that the most recent generation is the broadest. Generation five is quite narrow relative to generation eight. And this actually produces a pattern which we see in rapidly growing populations. The youngest generations are the widest and the oldest generations are the narrowest. So here's a population pyramid of the Sudan and you can see that the population over age 60 is quite slight whereas it's very broad from age 0 to 4. And you'll say, well that has a lot to do with mortality and you're right. People die as they get older. But partly what we're seeing here is not just mortality, but we're seeing a rapidly growing population. And that's why that population pyramid is so broad at the bottom. So to illustrate this, this is the population pyramid of Japan in 2010. And here you'll notice that it's much wider at the top than it is at the bottom. So that the Japanese population isn't as narrow as it is from age 0 to 5 until you get way up there to age 80 to 85. And clearly this represents a long-lived population, but again it also represents a population that's actually declining and going to get smaller and smaller uh, from generation to generation. So now let's move from our model uh, to human population growth. And we're going to focus on the last 10,000 years. 10,000 BP before present marks the beginning of the Holocene, which is the geological epoch that we live in. And to put this in human terms, that's about 400 grandmas ago. So if you count from your mother to her mother to her mother to her mother and back 400 times, that seems like a lot of generations. But imagine all of those grandmas sitting by you on some bleachers. It would be just 400, and the 400th would be a hunter-gatherer, because 10,000 years ago, every human was a hunter-gatherer. And estimates are that the global population was about 10 million people. Uh, then came the Neolithic Revolution and more people. And we're going to leap over uh, this very quickly and say that by the beginning of the Christian era in the West, about 81, and continuing up until about 8, AD 1300, the global population was fluctuating somewhere between three and 500 million people with lots of ups and downs due to epidemics and wars and the collapse of civilizations. We had the rise and fall of Rome during this time, um, tumult in agrarian societies around the world. But in any case, by 88, 1920, the world's population had reached a billion. And this is with the tremendous loss of life to epidemics from the old world in the Americas. It's with the plague hitting Europe and much of Asia. Um, despite those losses, there was a doubling in the world's population. And we can say, well, that took about five centuries, right? We'll estimate that at five centuries. 
And then things get to move faster. So we started, we said in 1820, we had a billion humans. Uh, when did we reach 2 billion then? Have we reached 2 billion? And it turns out it's right around 1920. And we can round these numbers off because these estimates are so rough. But roughly now we have a century to double. So we've gone from taking five centuries to go from half a billion to a billion to taking just one century to go from one billion to two billion. And this seems a little bit like that simple model we just looked at. Well, when do we reach four billion? Have we reached four billion? That's a lot of people. Well, roughly around 1974, but we can round that off to 1970. And now the population of the world doubled again just in 50 years. And this seems to be quite impressive, right? This is definitely an exponential growth curve that we're seeing here. And it's around this time that the population bomb by Paul Ehrlich is published and scientists begin to worry a great deal about human population growth and what's sustainable. So when do we reach 8 billion? Well, we're, we're getting there. So let's count through this. In 1960, uh, when I was not yet uh, born, but almost in the world, the global population was 3 billion. By 1974, uh, by that time I was just finishing grade school, getting ready to go into junior high, the population was 4 billion. By 1987, I was going into graduate school, the population was 5 billion. By 1999, I was finishing up my PhD and the population in the world, meanwhile, had reached 6 billion. So in the course of those years, that's just 40 years, the population of the planet doubled again from 3 billion to 6 billion. And if it had continued, we'd already be at 8 billion and on beyond. But then things started to slow down. So it took us to 2012 uh, to hit 7 billion. And uh, we're still on the way to 8 billion. So a question arises, how high can we go? Uh, that question of 8 billion, the low estimate in the past is turning out to be accurate that we'll probably reach 8 billion people around 2025. So we'll draw two uh, conclusions here. Um, the first is really obvious. Billions more people are alive today than ever were alive before. And that must mean something for our social organization. There must be something very different about the world today uh, than the world 10,000 years ago. And secondly, uh, that growth cannot continue indefinitely. And that's rather obvious. Thank you for listening.